was recently contacted by some Trinitarian pagans, and uh, they sent this big thing that I need to recant of my beliefs, like good Catholics uh, would say. And they said that they have proved the Trinity exists in Genesis chapter 18. And uh, I would share the comments, but then some effeminate freak out there would come out and start screaming doxing or some kind of thing like that and try to get me in trouble with secular people that hate God. So uh, I'm not going to share the comment, but I'll show you their argument. Genesis chapter 18. Show you how desperate these pagan Trinitarians get. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men, separate men, see it, stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And look what he says here. And said, My Lord. Oh, so the three were there, separate people, but they're just one Lord. Oh, <laughs> let's keep reading. If now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts, and that after that ye shall pass on, for therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, notice it was singular, my Lord. He sees the Lord, and they said, the three, oh. <laughs> I'm serious, this, this was sent to me. And they said, So do as thou hast said. And Abraham hastened unto the tent unto Sarah. And it goes on and on and on. You can read there, talks about, you know, they, that the Lord's there and he's telling Abraham what's going to happen. He's going to have a son and the whole thing. And Sarah laughs and the whole deal, if you're familiar with the story. But this is how desperate these Trinitarian pagans get. Okay? They say, This right here is the Trinity. Well, okay, I'd like to point out the obvious fact again the word Trinity is not there. Uh, neither do we see God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. Okay, uh, it's not there either. Um, but I'd also like to point out a very simple fact. If you were coming to a court situation and you said there's three men and that proves that this is the Trinity. Any lawyer, you know, just amateur lawyer is going to look and say, okay, where does it say Trinity? It doesn't. Um, couldn't it be the Lord and two other men with him? Which is exactly what it is. We'll get to that here in just a minute. But uh, um, another point I'd like to make is, if this is the Trinity down there on the earth, who's in heaven? God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, three in one. They're, they're th the three men are down there speaking in unison. Is it, where is it, what about it says they said? Well, uh, yeah, some three men come to my house here and they say, hey, could we you know, have something to eat or whatever else? And I'd say, well, would you like some spaghetti or something? And, they'd, and they said, yes. That doesn't mean it was all in unison. Again, people get so desperate. But here's the real sin of this whole thing. And I said sin. It is an egregious sin to lie on this level. All right. If this is the Trinity here, the Trinity called properly the Godhead, not Trinity is not a Bible word. It's a pagan Catholic creation. If this is the Trinity, okay, um, then God is a liar. We're going to go to the verse here in just a little bit. But Exodus chapter 33, God shows God, the Father, the soul, shows himself to Moses. And he says, no man can see me and live. We'll go to the passage here in just a few minutes. But uh, if that's true, then God's a liar. Because God just appeared here in this passage to Abraham. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He just appeared. See, now if you're a Trinitarian, you got to go weasel off and you try to say, well, well, uh, you, you, you see, um, yes, it was the, the bodily forms of the three, but, but um, what it's talking about, no man has seen God at any time. Um, um, that, that's the, uh, the God the Father's soul, which, or you can just believe the Bible which they can't do, actually, because they're lost. They're dead in trespasses and sins. They're not quickened with the Holy Spirit. So truth is something that's always going to be elusive to lost people like the Trinitarians. But let me show you here. This is, by the way, this is not my normal Bible. This is a Ruckman reference Bible, okay? You can see on the spine there, Ruckman reference Bible. 
Let's look at the footnote of Ruckman's reference Bible here. Um, 18, verse 3, chapter 18, verse 3. Abraham sees three men and addresses one of them as my Lord. This will probably be the middle of the three. Two of the angels go down to Sodom and one stays. Verse 26. This man that the this means that the man is the angel of the Lord. No angel that shows up is sexless, and no angel that shows up has any wings. The demoniac winged Gabriel, who gave the entire Quran to Muhammad, had 600 wings, according to the Holy Hadith, Bukhari, volume 6, number 380. If true, Muhammad's Gabriel was a giant demoniac vulture. Amen, Dr. Ruckman. Okay, just to show you the footnote here, down at the bottom of the page there. Pause it and read it. Some of you idiot Trinitarians out there need to get a little bit of an education. All right. He doesn't say, I mean, Ruckman was a great Bible scholar, and he does not say, well, this must be the Holy Trinity. All right. And I'm going to show you later on he teaches exactly what I teach on the Godhead. But let's look at verse 22. Okay. You can go through all the verses there where he's talking, you know, the Lord's talking to Abraham and telling him he's going to have a son and Sarah's laughing and the whole deal. But let's get down to verse 22. The three men. Okay. Verse 22. And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord. So the three men come. One is the Lord. The other two men leave. So that's a split in the Trinity there. I guess the Trinity just had a little separation there or something. Uh, or you can actually read context. Go to chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, and Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So who were the other two members of the three-member team there that appears in Genesis chapter 18. The Lord and two angels. Okay, not the Trinity. I'm sorry to all you pagans out there, you lost pagans, that think that you can get by with your Trinity teaching you found some special magical verse. No, sorry. Um, and if you did, by the way, like I said, you'd be proving God to be a liar because the Bible says over and over again, no man's seen God at any time in reference to the Father. You can't see him. He's a soul. Well, except for where he revealed himself to Abraham, right? Kind of weird why people would want to make God into a liar. But look at verse, uh, what do we have here? Verse 13, Genesis chapter 19, verse 13. Check this out. It says here, for we will, the angel speaking, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. The three that appeared to Abraham was the Lord and two angels. It wasn't the Trinity. Just read context. Continue reading. Right? Again, I have some sympathy for Trinitarians because they're lost. In their lost condition, just... All you got is the pagan philosophies of Rome and your catechism that says that the Trinity is the most important core doctrine of the faith, and you just have to defend it to the, to the, to the death. You know? Understand that. You poor people. You need to get saved. Right? And if you're out there and you're a Bible-believing Christian and you do what I once did, and you're mistakenly saying triune God or Trinity or God the Father, God the Son, well, God the Father is biblical, but God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, uh, you need to drop that stuff. All right? Really. Unless you just want to say, I'm no longer a Bible believer. I just, I'm a Bible believer in some matters of faith and practice, and then I add some things from philosophy. Be honest. Be honest. Okay? You're not a Bible believing Christian if you say the word Trinity. Plain and simple. I'm going to stop watching your videos. Please do. Please do. Okay? I really wish people would take their own advice. I'm unsubscribing. Good. Good do that. Exodus chapter 33, verse 18 through 23. We'll read the passage here where God is dealing with Moses. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Moses speaking to the Lord, show me thy glory. 
And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live, except for Abraham, because he saw the entire trinity there in Genesis chapter 18, right? Um, if that's true, if you want to cling to Genesis 18 being the trinity, you wicked Trinitarians out there, then you're calling God a liar. We know who your father is, too, the father of lies. Uh, verse 21, And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Okay? There is passages of Scripture in the book of Revelation where they're seeing souls. John sees souls. So I do believe that you can see a some whatever the soul looks like. Again, that, the Bible's not real crystal clear on what it looks like. It could be the shape of a body. You kind of get an image in your mind of the shape of a body, but it's very bright, kind of a light emanating from this bodily form. We really have no idea what a soul looks like. Really have no idea. But it's what Moses saw right there. He sees God the Father, the soul, but he doesn't see his face. All right? Again, the Godhead can split up. That what's, that's what makes him God and us just mortal men. I can't split off from my soul or my spirit as my body of flesh right now and walk around and do something, my soul do something else. God can. All right? Go to uh, John 1.18, to the New Testament. John chapter 118. And just, you know, again, I got to just pause here for a minute. You Trinitarians, okay? This is called a book, all right? And it's specifically called the King James Bible. Say it with me King James Bible, all right? Instead, instead of sitting there just with your gritting your teeth and weeping and wailing and things, instead of doing that, Maybe you ought to go out and buy a King James Bible and actually look at it. All right? No iPhone app or little software on your little computer there. Okay? I know it's hard. And I know you get the pages wet because you're sucking your thumb and things. I know. I know. It's hard. But grow up sometime. All right? Look the verses up. John chapter 1, verse 18. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Uh, unless you believe that the Trinity, Trinity appeared to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18. God's a liar, according to the Trinitarians, that would use Genesis 18. I mean, what kind of a mindset do these people have? Anything goes. Nothing is off limits with these people. Whatever it takes to prove their pagan philosophy of this Trinity thing. It's disgusting. I'll show you another verse of Scripture. And then we'll end it. Because I realize the Trinitarians, they haven't even watched the video. You know, they watch a few minutes and then they they just go and they, you know, go off into some rant someplace and they they turn their little webcams on and they start making new videos, you know. Denninger to call this Denninger. I'm gonna I'm gonna go after Denninger in any way I can. We'll bring Denninger down. <laughs> First Timothy chapter six, verse fourteen through sixteen. That thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, context here is the Lord Jesus Christ which in his times he shall show who is the blessed and third potentate, the third king of kings and third lord of lords. Oh, no, it doesn't say that. It says uh, who is the blessed and only, only potentate, the king of kings and lord of lords. One. Not a third of God. Not, well, God, and there's three persons and things, but they're all just one God. They all have the same title. 
a bunch of pagan nonsense. Verse 16, who only hath immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man hath seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. Unless you're a Trinitarian. Then you have to go all throughout the Bible and try to prove that God appeared. That God, no, excuse me, not Godhead. They can't say that. You know, they, they always have to go back to Trinity. It's so weird. I don't get this thing. It just, it's just, it's, it's a different spirit. I do understand it from that angle, but it just, it, it's, it's, you know, it's like the Lord. He marvels at their unbelief. He just kind of go, it's really this bad. These people, they, they, they cannot just say, okay, I'm going to not say Trinity anymore because it's not in the Bible. I'm just going to stick with Godhead. You know, they, they can't do it. They got to always go back to Trinity. But they're so desperate that they would be willing to make God into a liar, make the Bible contradict by saying that the Trinity appeared in Genesis 18, physically appeared, all three members of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they're all right there, three of them, walking up to Abraham and speaking in unison. What more can I say? Okay? Make your little webcam videos, get it turned on, your little pale sissies and things out there, pink papist patrol, whatever you want to call yourselves, whatever, uh, you know, you got a, your, your mission in life, you know, between sucking your thumb and, and holding your blankie is to shut Brian Dunlinger down, okay? Because then that's going to make the whole problem go away. Which is funny, really, because a lot of my teaching on the Godhead actually came from other brethren that sent me scriptures and said, what, what about this, you know, whatever. But as long as you get rid of me, then you can have your way and things. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, what you papists need to understand is the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. All right. You go after Bible-believing preachers and teachers like myself, and it only emboldens those out there who also know the truth. You never learn that. You never, you never get that, you papists out there. You take down one preacher and a whole bunch more rise up. You just don't, you don't get it. Because you see, you think you're lost, and so you're thinking just in terms of man versus man. You don't understand the Holy Spirit of God. You're not born again. There's nothing spiritual that happened at your supposed conversion. So you don't get it. So you think, if we can take down that movement there, Brian Denlinger is the head of this movement. Brian Denlinger is not the head of this movement. The Lord Jesus Christ is. And he's revealed things to other members of the body of Christ out there that I was never shown. And they show it to me and I say, whoa, that's really good. Yeah, I'll preach that. But you shut me down, you shut me up, a whole bunch more spring up. You're just so ignorant of history. Don't you get this, you Roman Catholics out there, you Papists. We'll just silence the Christians out there. We'll silence the Bible believers. No, you won't. You can't. Because you're going to find that trying to silence people like me, you're fighting against God's will. You want to silence me? Then go on about and do your thing. You preach the truth. And then we'll see who God is for. Myself and my brothers and sisters in Christ that line up with the King James Bible and use the term Godhead, or you and your pagan buddies with your Trinity concept. A double dare you. Just going out and preach your truth. And we'll see who comes out. Sorry about that. I forgot I was going to read the Ruckman Reference Bible note on John chapter 1, verse 18. Uh, again, Ruckman Reference Bible. He says here, The verse seems to contradict the fact that many people in the Old Testament saw God. And he lists a bunch of scriptures. But what they saw was not God's soul. In the Godhead, the Father is the soul, the Holy Spirit is the spirit, and Jesus Christ is the body. In the Old Testament, men saw the bodily shape of Jehovah, the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ, in his pre-incarnate state. Jesus taunted the Pharisees with that in John 5, verse 37. Okay. Um, I thought Ruckman was a Trinitarian, according to some of you lying papists out there. Uh, no, Ruckman taught and believed the way I do. Okay, it's not my heresy that I came up with, you see. 
And Ruckman did the mistake of using some of the Trinitarian language, which I did as well. And the Lord convicted me, say, get that stuff out of your speech. And I did. If you're saved, you will too. But let me show you the note. There it is, Ruckman Reference Bible. Down at the bottom of the page. Read it and weep, all you papists out there. Don't try to hijack, hijack Ruckman's movement and make it your movement and say that Denlinger's out on his own and whatever else. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, I have the Lord on my side and the truly saved body of Christ out there that have had a changed life after their salvation, you know, supernatural change. They're born again. You know, we're uh, new creatures. All, th all things are become new, you know. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. We're not over here on this side with you lost devils. Okay? Thank you for watching and have a nice day.